All right, we're on. On this on Jenny Pride, no Jerry Girl Wolves. Anyways, um, this video is about Mercy. I pronounce his name, Mercia Eliadi, who is a Romanian theologian and religious philosopher. A sort of political theology that he did. He believed that all of the communities in the world were created through basically an imitation of the universe, an imitation of God's creation. Now you see towns, they have town squares, they have central parts of the town where the, the mayoral offices, every single town is constructed that way as an imitation of what God's created. <clears throat> now, as I stated before in my video, Batali, Batali, his idea of the, um, basically the occur share and stuff like that, the ritual practices and stuff that he explained later in some of his, he started in the first part of the book and then at the end of it. And a lot of the things that the observances that Mercy allotted, I'm not completely finished with the book, so bear with me here. Now, the he made the difference between profane man and religious man. Religious man lived in a, had a, t a certain time schedule, a certain, a certain w world of being that he existed in tune with God's creation, whereas profane man was the outsider man, which he talked about in the church. The church was kind of when you entered there, it was sacred space. And when you got out of there, it was profane space. It was the general civilian world. Now, Giorgio Gambin, which talked about, you know, Homo Caesar, um, it was kind of a flip side of that whole thing where it said that, you know, Homo Caesar said that basically the when the person was cast out into into civilian life, that's where all the church people were. And but at the same time, Mer Mercia Alidi, Alidi, I can't pronounce the fucker's name. Mercia Aladi. There we go. His idea was that the actual higher plane was a the denigrated homo sacer plane of the political civil uh, political civilian man and the the living man which is related to biopower he believed that basically man that sacred space was the essence of what god's creation was and the rituals and the things that were practiced within it were part of a place where time is god's time not our time where everything is centered around a holy, an area of holiness. And the outside world is where all the profane things happen, the everyday life, the sturm and drang, and a lot of the, um, a lot of, you know, underhanded things happen, criminals wandering the streets. But you have a safe haven to church. That's one of the reasons why a lot of churches have, like, homeless shelters and stuff. Because it's a safe place to feel safe under God's watchful eye. Now, a lot of people will criticize Mercy Eladi for being one of the people that was, you know, because he was he supported the Iron Guard, he had so many views. But at the same time, the book does go into great detail about where about the different cultures that observe that completely live their lives in religious time and still practice rites of the old order. Um especially nowadays Western Europeans and Americans and Canadians especially, we don't practice that anymore. We live in an entire land of profane space. And the only semblance we have that has any connection to what God created was the way our cities are organized, where the fortresses are organized to keep out evildoers, to keep out those who might harm us, the barriers between the profane outside world of you know disgusting vermin in the inside world where everything is holy and there's this town center where all they can go to be absolved of their sins and to drink from the, the holy fountain and to be cleansed with it 
And that's the only connection we have that we have become so machine like that we've kind of taken away from that. And the weird thing about Mercialati was the fact that he was very much almost a primitive transhumanist if a thing exists. He believed that mankind had the ability to send to godlike planes if he was able to maintain a society that was closed off from the profane ex existence of, you know, the modern world, which, you know, I guess Evola might have touched on as well. Um, the idea is that the Jews, which, you know, Elodi was kind of weird because he didn't like them. He said they were subverters of culture, which, you know, I kind of share that view. Don't tell anybody. I don't want to get demoted. Um, but you know what I mean. His ideas that basically he did say, I lost my train of thought there for a second. He did say that basically people who, um, that people like the Amish, the Hutterites, are the only people that are living in religious time, are religious man, not profane man, which is concerned with the uh, the media, the corporations, Paulinism, not really to Dionysius, you know, no disrespect to him, Dionysius, uh, this Di no, Diogenes, not Dionysius, excuse me there, Diogenes the Cynic, not disrespecting him, he was a very good man, um, but I'll have to say that a lot of the ideas that we exist in this time is basically based around a machine like, basically, you know, movementarian kind of idea where we just go with the flow. We just kind of, we're interconnected by everything, but we're not connected to God. We're connected to machines. We're connected to, you know, this whole artificiality that the world has created. And I think that's what Mercia Lati was trying to get at. The fact that, you know, is all sorts of... Uh, I guess a lot of people did cons criticize consumerism. And the fact is, is that people think that Adorno and the Frankfurt School are the only ones who did criticize um, consumerism. But no, there's ones on the right too. They first there from Rose too. He criticized consumerism greatly. Um, but... As far as Mircea Lotti, he's more of a perennialist. He found value in almost every culture, from pagans to Christians to Muslims. Every single one of them had their own culture. Even the ancient Hebrew Israelites had their own culture where everything was centered around the religious observance of rites, the religious observance of, cult, of, of different things that you basically would have to do to in order to participate in the society certain rules to abide by unspoken truths and the fact that all these communities would be centered around a wise man or a philosopher king and they were all centered in this particular way that was an emblematic imitation of how the universe was you see how the universe is there's a core and there's a center and there's all these galaxies it's an imitation everything revolves around something and ultimately all revolves around the god or the gods of their choosing. And I think that Mercy Law is trying to make a point that most of the people are getting away from that. And are trying to be more spread out. Not trying to keep themselves away from the attacks from the outside world and opening their borders too much. It's kind of an anti-immigration anti argument there to be made. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I have to say about him. Um, it's basically a, uh, little overview of what I've been reading lately. And, um, I remember, subscribe, bell for notifications, you know, the, the, you know the drill, you know the drill. Anyways, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the new subscribers, you're all great. And you are awesome. And thanks for just tuning in. No Patreon. I don't ask for money. I do this for fun and just because I'm interested in the inner workings of the world. Thanks, all of you. Anyways, I will come up with another video right after this one, but I will see you later. I'm here to stay in my camaraderie.